Good morning, it's 9 a.m. and I will call to order the June 8th meeting of the Sleem County Board of Commissioners. Would you all please stand uh, for a flag salute and remain standing for the, <coughs> on the side. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, would the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Commissioner Shadwick? Here. Commissioner Sparks? Here. Commissioner Vidrickson? Here. Commissioner Weiss? Here. Commissioner White? Here. Good morning. <clears throat> if everyone can make sure that all microphones, phones, and other electronic devices are muted when you are not speaking so that remote observers can hear the proceedings clearly. I would appreciate it. Now, if Brad, our IT director, could instruct everyone on how to raise their hand in the meeting. Good morning, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there is no one attached to the meeting at this time. Uh, well, thank you, Brad. And at this time, we'll move into our citizens' input portion of the meeting where citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to three minutes and pertaining to items not on today's agenda. Norman Mantle, Salina County. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Norman. Mor okay. In the, in the paper, it's advertising for truck drivers. Are we paying for these truck drivers' training? As so, are we paying for other employees' training? Because if we're gonna pay, pay for one, we're gonna to have to pay for all of them. Are we reimbursing these people that already have training? I mean, we're opening a can of worms if we're paying for just one group. The tuition that was in the June 2nd paper, it says it's eight weeks tuition, $3,459 for tuition. Now, if we send them to school for eight weeks, are we paying them their salary while they're at school? If I want to be an auto mechanic or any other trade, I go to school and get the training before I apply for the job. You're opening up a can of worms. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, we will move into action items. Item number one. Oh, ex excuse me. <laughs> we will move into the approve the consent agenda as presented. Uh, yeah, excuse me. I kind of went right by that one uh, at this time. Are there any commissioners who wish to add or delete items from the consent agenda? At this time, we will cons approve the consent agenda as approval of prior minutes as presented, tax roll adjustments as presented, approval of accounts payable, approval of payroll as presented, and approval of public forum agenda as presented. The consent agenda will stand approved. At this time, we will move into action items. Item one. American Rescue Plan Act grant funding request with Tim Rogers, Salina Airport Authority. Good morning, Mr. Rogers. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning, uh, to visit with you this morning about an opportunity that's very unique uh, to the citizens, citizens of Slink County and our region. Uh, and uh, I know this is a, you have a, a letter of request uh, for grant funding in front of you. Uh, I will not read that letter, thankfully, uh, but I'd like to make some additional comments here and then uh, turn over to County Administrator uh, uh, Phil smith Haynes uh, for any additional comments that he would like to add and then questions and answers that you all may have concerning the request. First off, I'd like to add, thank you for the opportunity to partner with you on a project that is very unique. Uh, it's kind of a one-of-a-time, uh, 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 one-time opportunity to really gain a competitive edge for our recovery as a community, as a county and a region from uh, the, the really the negative impacts of COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> What's that competitive edge? That competitive edge is a chance to add nonstop service between Salina and 
Houston, uh, Texas, which is the fourth largest uh, city in the United States. This really has a impact on a faster recovery of the travel, tourism, and uh, hospitality industry, which is a very significant part of our economy locally uh, and the region. It's also really it helps to uh, facilitate the enhanced business recruitment, business retention, and overall quality of life. Um, about the only thing I can equate this to is that if we could, would we build another interstate highway coming through Salina, Kansas? I think we would. Would we add uh, high-speed jet service to the community? Uh, that would be a, almost an equivalent uh, economic impact. I think we would favorably want to consider that uh, kind of going forward. The American <clears throat> Rescue Plan Act grant funding does provide for the ability for the county to use their allocation of those funds, some $10.5 million, to assist with the recovery of the hospitality, travel, and tourism industry. <clears throat> that has been confirmed by U.S. Treasury that this type of project would be an eligible and uh, permitted use of those funds. And in fact, through Senator Moran's office, there was a comment that Treasury uh, would encourage the use of uh, these funds and consideration of the use of these funds for this purpose. So it seemed very appropriate. What has happened with the tourism, travel, hospitality industry uh, really has been significant. Uh, it has been an impact that has been uh, that those segments, those industry segments, really have been the hardest hit during COVID-19 and the pandemic. Travel and tourism has been down as much as 40, 45 percent, 60 percent in parts of the country and the, the area. Uh, right now, in this area, travel uh, spending is down 24 percent, still compared to 2019. Much of this comparison is back to 2019, because 2019 was a peak period of time for travel and air service and uh, and travel tourism spending. <clears throat> and really, in to summarize it, the total impact was of the of pandemic on travel, tourism, and hospitality was eight, 18 times greater, 18, 18 times worse than the 2008 financial crisis. Full recovery is not expected to 2019 levels until really 2023, 20, 2024. It's a slow process to get people back to the travel and tourism levels of 2019. <clears throat> There may be a question in, in, in your minds whether or not this would be a good time to consider you know, an agreement uh, with SkyWest Airlines to add a flight to Houston and add that, and I would say it is. Uh, based upon current passenger numbers and the numbers that you have in your, in your letter of application request, I uh, have to say those numbers were, were incorrect as of uh, this week. Uh, in your uh, letter, we showed last the pre a previous week total of 880 total passengers. This past week, the most recent numbers, 953 total passengers. So passenger travel is increasing. Uh, it is, uh, and if there was ever a time to talk to an airline about adding a flight, you'd want to do it at a time when you're you're showing progress in recovery uh, in there in this market. Uh, it does show that we are uh, we do have a demand for air travel for this region uh, and we do can make are making the case for a third flight and where would that third flight be and we have identified Houston through a feasibility study that is available for you if you'd like to have it uh, and look at that in more detail the high load factors now also lead us to look to think and uh, and have a confidence that Houston will be successful because we're not running a 20% load factor, we're running a higher load factor. That really gives us an indication that any uh, revenue shortfall will be minimal, and especially as we're looking at starting this in the uh, fall, September timeframe, right before the travel, peak travel times of, of the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, that would be very, very uh, good timing. Uh, when we look at what is occurring with existing uh, numbers, uh, the airport authorities identified the need to make some immediate uh, improvements at the terminal building to provide additional concourse uh, seating for our passengers currently. If we're going to add the third flight, we have to add more seating for passengers because we most probably have two flights departing approximately at the same time. Uh, if you had a, a Denver flight uh, and a Houston flight uh, departing at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. in close proximity to one another, in that time frame, we have to have room for seating uh, over one, 100 passengers at the minimum. 
We have identified the improvements that need to be made. Uh, that contract has already been uh, let. The airport authority will be spending $350,000 in concourse improvements that really go in conjunction with this uh, grant request. And the airport authority will be there also with this grant request committing $125,000 to market a flight to Houston in addition to the, uh, the federal grant funds that would be used for a, a revenue guarantee. <clears throat> Slana to Houston. What does that mean? The numbers really are significant, and as the feasibility study really was surprising uh, how much more it makes uh, travel easy for residents of Salina, Slane County, and North Central Kansas. 25 new markets, just right off the bat, nonstop to Houston, and then Houston to 25 different markets. And you always got to always remember the reverse. It's to and from. Those 25 markets gain access to Salina and Slane County, and our our attractions here and travel here, conventions here. It makes it easier for Visit Salina to attract uh, in businesses, conferences, sports teams out of those markets out of southeast uh, Texas and southwest Louisiana. Provides us connections, one-stop uh, one connections to 26 international markets uh, throughout, you know, Mexico and South America and 13 improved uh, Markets 13 improved uh, connections to markets in, in, in Florida. Again, ease of getting in and out of uh, the community. Jet service, uh, you know, less time, and, uh, and we believe very competitive fares. We would be, uh, again, uh, the only community along I-70 that would have three hub service. Competitive fares are important to attract passengers to this service, existing and the future. I included in the letter of request a sample of the fares that uh, uh, were just uh, for travel uh, for uh, like June 10, 21, and returning on, on June 17 of 21. Uh, and this is an example of what we do on a weekly basis through our air service consultant. We monitor those fares weekly. And so you can see that fares to the top 15 markets compared to Wichita and to Kansas City are very favorable, lower than the other markets, as much as $200 lower, as much as, you know, uh, you know and, and, you know, out of Wichita comparison, out of, uh, out of Kansas City, you know, uh, it could be $63 lower, $54 lower. That's a heavily uh, market heavily dominated by Southwest Airlines. So we are sh showing, we're offering, and passengers are using and would be able to use in a Houston service fares that are extremely competitive to attract those passengers to our market. Had a comment uh, from an individual that uh, was talking about the, uh, uh, the Houston service. I said, what do you think about it? And immediately this individual said, it's immediately we're gonna be bringing people in that are gonna go on cruises, they're gonna come through Salina. And uh, what that means, they'll either uh, come, stand, spend the night before they catch their flight to Houston for their cruise line uh, travel later on, uh, friends and family that drop people off the airport, they're going to stay in the community for a shop for a bit of the day or go get a bite to eat, and that's uh, what will happen. It is regional jet service, 50-seat uh, regional jets. Uh, that service will be uh, 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 jets that uh, we're using today uh, and provides that uh, service, that connection, about one, one, an hour and 45 minutes, the two-hour, you know, nonstop flight uh, to Houston. I think it's important to remember too, and I didn't necessarily get this in here in this, uh, you know, uh, in this detail. But uh, SkyWest uses One Vision Aviation at Salina for some of their maintenance. This also opens up the opportunity for One Vision to do more maintenance for what is called overnight maintenance or routine maintenance as a as uh, SkyWest uses Salina as a bridge between Houston, Denver, and Chicago. It opens up more opportunities there, and uh, really we have not had an opportunity to explore that until we get a note, until we know the flight is in place. Then we can exp we will we'll explore that in more detail. I can tell you with confidence and uh, with certainty that time is of the essence. Uh, this uh, proposal, this uh, negotiated uh, agreement with uh, SkyWest Airlines that you have uh, that accompanied the letter. Uh, has a shelf life and is a very short shelf life. SkyWest and United are working now, today, to actually set the schedule for September 1. That is how the industry has to work out 
ahead of the, uh, of the, on the timeline get ahead, that uh, schedule has to be in place so seats can be sold. And you know this would be only 60 days prior to September 1 if we get it done by, if the schedules are filed by the end of the month and really they really start going falling into place a week from today. <clears throat> those schedules, those seats have to be sold, and it takes that much line, that much time to get it into this, the computerized reservation system so it can be sold. More importantly, crews and aircraft have to be allocated. So one flight uh, to uh, to Houston requires five two uh, two member uh, to five crews of pi five two member pilot crews. Uh, that's ten pilots. They have to be be, and they're currently bidding on routes today, and it requires at least one, one and a half jets uh, to be required. So that's the vital resource that's being allocated right now. I know as of this morning that there is still competition for those 10 crew, those 10 pilots in that one jet that would be uh, allocated to a Salina Houston. Uh, that competition is, is a number of states away. Uh, that's to the north of us, and that's to the south of us, and I, you know, I just, Check through our consultant. Who else is in the, is is working towards this? Time is of the essence, so that's what we'd be asking for your action today, if they, you so desire, and if you are inclined to do so, that will help us get there. Grant administration, uh, 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 county administrator, and I have visited about this, and I think with your consultant that's on board, and grant will be uh, the funds will be held by the county. Uh, the airport authority will submit requests for reimbursements uh, if uh, we do need to pay, and uh, I would expect we'll initially have to be, be paying uh, for the shortfall in revenue based upon the revenue uh, guarantee agreement, minimum uh, revenue guarantee agreement that uh, we have with SkyWest. And, uh, but we'll submit quarterly requests for reimbursements. The reimbursements will, be, will include paid uh, SkyWest Airlines invoices for any revenue shortfalls. So the money will stay with the county will reimburse, will be reimbursed, will pay SkyWest and the airport authority will be, will be reimbursed. Uh, we do anticipate the grant would carry over like into 2023, <clears throat> but we'll come back and keep you informed and providing the county administrator to pass on to the Board of County Commissioners quarterly reports and, and uh, updates on where things are going and keep you informed. Um, do want to thank your county administrator. <clears throat> Phil uh, really, uh, you know, spurred me on to look at this. When this uh, uh, legislation first came out in March, uh, he sent me an email and said, uh, here's a provision in the, in the legislation. What do you think? Do you think there's anything here uh, that would benefit uh, the citizens of Saline County? And uh, he let me uh, take off with this idea. And uh, we've also had an involvement with uh, the Salina Chamber of Commerce, the Salina Community Economic Development Organization, the City of Salina, Kansas State, uh, Kansas Wesleyan, uh, and I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but we've had group meetings that uh, we've uh, helped, helped me formulate this grant request and then present that to you today. In closing, I just want to really thank you for considering this. Uh, appreciate you taking, uh, considering taking the lead on a very important economic development project, uh, COVID-19 recovery uh, action. Uh, and uh, I just want to leave you with a thought that there are few greater contributors to economic development than quality air service. In addition to COVID-19 recovery, the addition of a Houston flight helps with business recruitment, business retention, and quality of life for all Saline County residents. And I'd be glad to stand for any questions that you may have. Any questions? Uh, oh, yes, so, uh, not necessarily a question right off the bat, but um, as the county's uh, liaison to the airport authority, uh, I share Mr. Rogers' uh, enthusiasm for this project. I can tell you this isn't something that just fell out of the air that they picked Houston. Uh, it's been in the works for three uh, or even more years. And, and if you would, Tim, you might, uh, Gary Foss is the consultant that they've used for this project. And he is also the one that brought Sky West to Salina. He brought Chicago and Denver. He's the one that he, uh, I guess, uh, I'm not going to say eliminated the Hayes part of it, but, you know, oh, Salina supported the direct service. Hayes didn't, and but Gary Foss was a, a real leader in getting that service to Salina and eliminating, you know, direct service is, is unbelievable. 
and uh, his numbers that have been proposed and so forth uh, hold hold uh, a good deal. So I think we, I'm in favor of this without a question. And, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is not gonna cost the county a dime. Correct. This, this is gonna be the federal money from the uh, American Rescue uh, Plan Act. Uh, the city, if you were to look for the city in Mr. Uh, Greg's uh, uh, letter this morning, explains it all. They don't know what they're gonna get. It's gonna be a pittance compared to what we get. They don't know what's gonna be available. They may not be able to spend it on the same things that we do. They're not gonna get the money in a timely fashion, uh, and they have a lot more requests for the funds. This would still leave, if we give this $1.6 million, it's still gonna leave the county with uh, well over eight and a half million dollars or something to that effect. Uh, and uh, we're gonna have trouble spending all of that, I'm guessing. Well, we won't have, we'll find a way. Well, but, I'll be, uh, I'd be back. <laughs> this, is, this is an opportunity for the county commission to take the lead, as Mr. Rogers said, and, and for us to uh, really jump on this, I think is, is the thing to do at this time. So uh, if, if you don't mind, Tim, could you give us just a real small con uh, synopsis of Gary Foss and what he has meant to this project? <clears throat> I was fortunate to uh, be able to retain Gary and his uh, ArcStar group associates uh, uh, a number of years ago, and he has made the difference in our success with uh, uh, achieving jet service uh, and working with SkyWest Airlines and United Airlines. Gary's background, he was 30 plus years with American Airlines. Uh, he ran American Eagle, the regional division of American Airlines. He. Uh, he knows the uh, inside baseball of airline operations. He knows what happens behind the curtain and the executive offices of, of the air carriers. Uh, he used a contract for service with SkyWest Airlines. That's why he has a good relationship with SkyWest. Uh, he also, many of the uh, actually senior management and uh, with the United Airlines, actually many of them used to work for him when he was an American. So. He has a great understanding of, uh, of the industry, of, uh, can get the, a feel for what is, uh, what would be, uh, what's good. I asked Gary, said, if this proposal was in front of you, uh, <coughs> if you're running American Eagle, uh, and said, what would you think? He said, said, I would jump on this, you know, heartbeat. This is, uh, this will work. And that's what his feasibility says. His feasibility says, uh, and concurs with the concurrence of, uh, Sky West that, uh, you know, the actual cost is upwards of $2.2 million. And uh, with Gary's help, that's been negotiated to a revenue guarantee of about $1.64 million. That's the equity, that's the, that's what Sky West sees, that, uh, that it's uh, not as risky. And that's their indication that they've bought into it by the negotiated number that you see here. And that's due to Gary's relationship with uh, people at Sky West Airlines and within the industry. I'll say one more thing in, in favor of Mr. Foss. In all of his projections with uh, Sky West in regards to uh, Denver and Chicago uh, have have happened and even beyond. Uh, his, I have a great deal of faith in his projections and what this would mean for the for the city and what the travel would be and of course the uh, the, the chamber and the economic things that would happen. Uh, leave those projections up to those other people, but uh, this is a big deal. I think it's um, hard sometimes to know how government can assist in economic development, but uh, this is one that makes sense to me and one that I believe that the citizens um, would accept and um, approve. So uh, with that, though, I do have one question. Um, is this an actual contract with SkyWest United, or is this a, an agreement or verbal or? No, this will be uh, with the funds, uh, the pending, this is all a pending uh, action by uh, County Commission, the uh, Board of County Commissioners today, uh, included in your in the letter request is the draft transportation services agreement with SkyWest Airlines, and it is uh, and we would be able to go ahead and finalize the negotiations on this agreement, and it'll be uh, a one-year agreement with the ability to continue on, but it gets us that's uh, where it's their commitment. Once they sign this, it's their commitment to start the service in writing. A couple of questions. Yes, sir. Um, you talked about a grant carryover. Uh, the 1.6, I believe, is we're referring to as the grant, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a one-year contract. Uh, so if it, 
we're, we're guaranteeing that it's going to cost about 1.6 that year to get this up and going. Right. It, if it does uh, uh, do well and numbers are higher, uh, would that 1.6 be less? Yes. So, he, Commissioner Weiss, here's my view, and I think uh, Phil and I have talked about this also uh, <coughs> briefly, so that uh, I think the numbers are there that we will not need the full 1.64 million over the first 12 months of the of the service. I think we would uh, and step back, and if there is any carryover, we'll have to probably come back and ask and consult what do we do with that carryover. Uh, uh, what <clears throat> will need to happen administratively, and uh, in, and maybe Phil will have a different uh, thought on this, but you still will still need after any action today, go ahead and draft a, an agreement between the airport authority and Saline County. I think within that agreement, that's where we will uh, provide you know more detail for you what happens on any with any carryover. So, is any carryover still needed to continue the service? then we would know uh, a year from now. Uh, and we would be able to give you that indication. Do we need it, do we want to apply it to any other air service development project or does it get returned back to your, uh, to your, your COVID-19 relief fund if the fund is, uh, if the service is successful and, needs, and no, needs does not need any revenue guarantee? So it's not a direct answer, but it's, those are the options I think you have uh, and one is to carry it over. Second would be to take it back if it's no longer needed. But we won't know until about a year, a year from now. And I understand some of the logistics of, of Sling County being the sole funding source for this is, be, is a timing thing. Yes, Our sir. money is here. Your need is now. Uh, other entities don't have their money, even though they might be able to uh, expend some of their funds for the same line, line item, is that cor correct? That'd be correct. I think that's, it is, is that what we know today and based upon U.S. Treasury guidance that this is a, 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 a permitted use, an advisable use of the funds. The funds are on hand, uh, I think as I understand, as a, as a wired, have been, the first half of your funding has been wired, so the funds are on, on hand, have been wired to Sling County. So we actually can proceed ahead and sign an agreement knowing that the funds are available and final finalize a grant agreement between the airport authority and, uh, and the county. It's, we know all those, all those facts today. Those are facts we know today. And if we delay, this agreement could go away in a week because aircraft crews get, get allocated. Time kills all deals. And so that's, that's a sense of urgency. Well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, this does uh, amount to about 15% of our funding, and it's a it's a taste of change. It really is, right. uh, with with a short time frame for us to really uh, ponder it and and right. come up with this idea. But I do agree with Commissioner Shadwick. Um, this funding will help the community, the region, and uh, and I believe it it merits. Uh, action so um, we'll see how the vote goes thank you commissioner and it's like me when i when i first read this and i i i had a lot of reservations because it's like uh, being a business person in sling county for years the one thing that i looked at is that is like i look at as some of the negative parts of it of course as a businessman that's what you do but it's like you you sit there and think about it <clears throat> that we're subsidizing the whole region area of subsidizing their flight going out. And you talk about helping all the people that do come in to get those flights, spending the night and, and eating out and doing all this. And where Sling County does not get any of the bed tax that's there, it's like still is, is another issue. But looking at it and talking to Phil yesterday, it's like, and I'm going, the, the whole thing comes back to the helping of the community and the whole region of growing is, is, is just beyond comprehension of, of the areas that you fly to Houston and how quickly you can get from point A to B instead of flying to Chicago and waiting six hours to get your next flight. It's like this is just astonishing of, of the flights that are going to be available 
to getting people here and there <clears throat> is like I, this is a, a kind of a great windfall I think for the whole Sling County and the whole region area so I'm behind it thank you because but but it was some thoughts going into it yes thank you commissioner any other okay one one more question yes sir. Uh, is it still the intent of the airport authority to continue with free parking yes it is uh, because you didn't put that into the price of the tickets and I and I know if you're taking an international flight out of Salina you're going to be gone for <clears throat> five six seven eight days and I've parked at some of these uh, other uh, airports, and, and that, that's quite an expense in itself. You've hit on a very good point, and it is still our competitive edge uh, to maintain free parking. And uh, any additional uh, federal grant funding we have th through the Federal Aviation Administration uh, for the uh, terminal building improvements, uh, the grants that we have will permit us to uh, that we're seeking will allow us to continue offering free parking and that's our intent going forward okay any other comments or questions by the commissioners any comments from the public morning commissioners good morning Eric brown with the slant area chamber of commerce um, i'm here uh, to uh, speak about support of this uh, adding this flight to Houston obviously the Chamber of Commerce has the visit line or the Convention Visitors Bureau division um, some of the things that I won't go back over everything that, that Tim has told you um, but some of the things that I, I do want to hit on uh, this this flight would create greater efficiencies both both from the, the airlines perspective and from one vision um, I think that's a, a, a big piece of, of the support, Sling County, City of Sling, et cetera, as we, as we work through this. Um, one of the things that uh, Mr. Rogers talked about was post-secondary um, colleges and students. Um, specifically, Kansas Wesleyan University has a large group of students from Texas, Arizona, California. This makes it easier for them and their families to get to Salina um, and be a part of this community as well. Um, when you talk about what Sling County or Salina Airport Authority is committed, uh, $475,000 already, $125,000 in marketing, that gives us buying power as the Visit Salina Division to um, co-op those marketing dollars and really push that Saline that north central Kansas and further catchment area to get folks on these flights. So that partnership will continue. Um, and just a little bit about travel when we, when we had this hesitancy. I think being an early adopter, revenge travel is a word that's going around in the travel industry. And you're actually seeing that. You're seeing that with the employments. You're seeing historic numbers of people getting back, being willing to travel. Um, and I think if we if you you know we don't do this, we'll we'll miss out on a big part of that market segment. So with that Thank you, um, thank you for entertaining this, and I, I think that uh, this, these funds will, will go a long way in um, bringing people to Salina and um, improving quality of life, as Tim has said. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Mitch Robinson, Salina Economic Development Organization. Come I'm on. going to be even shorter than Eric <laughs> was. Uh, looking at the business aspect of this, uh, think about oil and gas industry, think about those in the plastics industry. Houston is a mecca for anything to do with oil and fuel, uh, plastics, lots of different industry segments. And uh, during some of the discussions uh, that Tim has had and Eric's had and I've had with some of the company officials here when they heard about this opportunity, they were all very supportive of that. So again, thank you all for considering this and we support this full, full 100%. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Anyone else? I will bring it back to the commission for more discussion or possible action. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the American Rescue Plan Act grant funding request by the Solana Airport Authority. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we approve American Rescue Plan Act grant funding request. Are there any further comments? If not, I will call for a vote. All in favor, yay? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Item two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
RFA 177-21, Salina Area United Ways 2021 Make a Difference Grant with Rosie Walter, Department of Senior Services Director. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning, Commissioners. I am here requesting today um, approval from the Commission to accept grant funding from the Salina United Area Way 2021 Make a Difference Grant. A total of 4,500 was awarded to Senior Services to provide OCCK transportation passes to homebound seniors. Transportation options will include picking up seniors directly from their home or if they can make it to a bus pass, giving them a monthly pass. Um, alternatives for action, sign the memorandum of understanding for grant funding of $4,500 or deny the request. The staff recommendation is to sign the memorandum of understanding to accept grant funding of $4,500 Bus passes will allow seniors an opportunity to have transportation to the senior center or other activities or appointments for them. Um, there is no cost to the seniors or to the county. Um, grant funding of 4,500 will be used to purchase the OCCK bus passes. Okay, any comments or questions by the commissioners? I have one question and that is, uh, this is strictly for the use of senior citizens. Yeah, it's only for my Meals on Wheels participants. So, in other words, someone who is 30 years old? No. <laughs> no, this would just be for homebound seniors. So, the thought behind this was because of the COVID, you know, my population for Meals on Wheels is dramatically increased. I'm trying to inspire them to get back out and to come back to the senior center. And, you know, I mean, this way I'll be able to take them to the center and then bring them back home. And if they're able to make it to a bus pass, then I'll give them a month pass so that they can go wherever they need to go within that month to appointments or wherever. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments? Any members of the public could wish to speak? I will bring it back to commissioners for more discussion or possible action. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve by signature the Salina Area United Way grant as presented. I second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA number 177-21 Salina, Salina Area United Way's 2021 Make a Difference grant. Any further comments? If not, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Thank Rosie. You. Next item. Item three, RFA 175-21, transfer fire tank. Hannah Stambaugh, Deputy County Administrator. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Commissioners. I am here on behalf of Rural Fire District Number 5 and Rural Fire District Number 3. Um, fire District 5 purchased a new pumper tanker, and they are requesting to sell their 1995 Freightliner that's a 2,000-gallon uh, tanker to Rural Fire District Number 3 for a cost of uh, $22,000. Fire District Number 3's Board of Trustees discussed this purchase at their May 24th board meeting and approved the purchase pending commission approval. Our uh, purchasing policy does allow for purchase of used equipment as an exception to competitive purchase, so this request for action is more for um, the approval of the disposal of the apparatus through sale. Your alternatives are for the authorization of Rural Fire District Number 5 to sell the tanker to Rural Fire District Number 3 for 22000 or not authorize the sale of the equipment. Our recommendation is to authorize them to sell. Um, this obviously will provide um, some additional capabilities for response for Fire District Number 3 in the end. The uh, budget impact piece of it, the $22,000 purchase price will come from Rural Fire District Number 3's Special Equipment Fund and then be deposited into Rural Fire District Number 5 Special Equipment Fund. Any comments or question by the commissioners? Uh, Hannah, will this be replacing a piece of apparatus or will it just be added to their fleet? So um, for specifically for fire district number three, they had a very large tanker that was donated to them several years ago that they have now decommissioned. So um, this piece of apparatus will, will replace that in some sense of the way. This is just a 
their 8,000 gallon, 8, gallon tanker that they had several years ago, it was hard to find volunteer firefighters that could, that could actually drive it. So this is a piece of apparatus that will assist them have a lot more opportunities for it to be used and a little bit more practical for their uses. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any members of the public who wish to speak? Seeing none, I will bring it back to the commission for more discussion or possible action. Mr. Chairman, I move we authorize Rural Fire District Number Five to sell the tanker to Rural Fire District Number Three. Second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 175-21 transfer fire tank. Any further comments? If not, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you. Hannah, next item four. RFA 176-21 Radio Talk Group MOU with Hannah Stambaugh, Deputy County Administrator. Good morning again. again. So as part of the new emergency radio communication system, new talk groups or otherwise known as radio channels had to be created in the 800 megahertz world. Um, so part of that also process was Saline County having to receive permission from our surrounding neighbors, uh, surrounding jurisdictions to program their talk groups into our radios. So this request for action today is then now to return the favor. And we have uh, received uh, requests from our surrounding neighbors as well for us to provide them with, uh, with our talk groups so they can program our stuff into their radios. What this ultimately does is just creates that, that sense of interoperability. If you remember when we were going through the process of this new emergency radio communication system, that was a big thing, was making sure that we were going to be able to talk to our neighbors and our neighbors were gonna be able to talk to us. So in this request for action is several memorandums of understanding with our surrounding jurisdictions, also to include the Kansas Highway Patrol and Ellsworth Correctional Facility um, for them to receive our talk group information to be programmed into their radios. Our recommendation is for each of the memorandums to be signed and um, we have already, like I said, we've already obtained permission from those jurisdictions to program their stuff into our radios. Um, this is just creating that, uh, or closing that loop. There is no budget impact. There's any cost for other jurisdictions to reprogram their stuff will be on them. So, um, so if you have any questions whatsoever, I'm certainly happy to answer them. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Any members of the public who wish to speak? I will bring it back to the commission for more discussion and possible action. Mr. Chairman, I move uh, we approve by signature the MOUs as presented for RFA 176-21. Second. It has been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 176-21 radio talk group MOU. Any further comments? If not, we'll call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Hannah. We'll, we will move into informational items. County Administrator's update. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Phil. Uh, County Administrator Philip Smith-Haynes. Uh, just a few things today. First off, the National Association of Counties uh, NACO, as it's commonly known. Their annual conference is coming up, and um, so there's an opportunity for commissioners. It's uh, virtual and in-person hybrid this year. Um, so there's an opportunity for commissioners to attend. There's also an opportunity for commissioners to designate somebody to vote um, if you wish to vote in the NACO elections. And um, the county clerk has informed me as well that KAC is looking for someone to be the NACO representative for uh, the whole uh, state of Kansas as well. So I just wanted to 
bring those opportunities to the commissioner's attention. If anybody has uh, interest in any of that, um, please let me know and we can go into details. The second thing is just to um, give you an update on the Expo Center color scheme. Uh, you may recall that our lease with the city of Salina specifies that we need to uh, do some painting and some metal repair at the Expo Center, and they uh, have requested that we have colors that complement but do not match with the colors at TPEC. Uh, there are two colors on the exterior at TPEC on the metal. There is Barrage Champagne and Foothills are the two uh, colors. And so our, uh, our project managers have come up with this uh, color scheme here. Uh, it's a four color scheme that includes dark bronze, which is this one here, cityscape, uh, which is this uh, light gray, sandstone, which is pretty self-explanatory, and slate gray. And uh, there's a, a list of which uh, those colors will go on to which buildings, but I won't uh, read that if you're interested in details uh, come visit me in my office but i did want to bring the the actual uh, metal pieces to uh, the commission because it's a little hard to just you know print them out and put it in a packet and have it look correct so uh, just to let you know we are moving forward on that and last but certainly not least as uh, tim rogers mentioned earlier uh, I did have a conversation with County Treasurer Jim Dubois first thing this morning uh, to verify that we have received the first 50% of our American Rescue Plan funds. $5,266,188 was deposited in the county's bank account last night. So we've got the first half. And our consultants will be here on July 20th um, and will be at your commission meeting on that day. That's all I have for uh, commissioners today, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, I have a, a quick uh, comment. Uh, I, I sent Phil a um, email that I received from a constituent this weekend uh, regarding discharging of firearms within a, a distance of a home that didn't belong to him and so forth. And uh, that, that constituent was wanting to know if there was a ordinance, an ordinance that, uh, that pertained to that. and. Of course, I, my response to him was to, if he felt endangered, well, I'd certainly call the sheriff and go from there. And I would like to know if you have a response to that, Phil, as far as an ordinance or if this, the, the or common sense law covers it. I, I don't believe that we have an ordinance, but I have forwarded that email to uh, County Councilor Mike Montoya to weigh in on that. Uh, Discharge of firearms is a tricky subject because uh, oftentimes the state legislature wants to weigh in on, on firearm regulations. So I've asked Mike to check and see if that's something we even could have an ordinance on or what, what the rules are. So I'll be following up with Mike on that. I was, I was under the understanding that discharging of, of a firearm, at least from a county road, was against the law in the first place, but I don't know. I'll, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll follow up with Mike. Thank you. Any other comments? Can, can you give us kind of a synopsis of what the July 20th uh, meeting with that uh, uh, consult group will amount to? Oh, thank you, Commissioner Weiss. Yes, so um, part of... Uh, what we have engaged the uh, consultants to do is to determine or help us determine, recommend to your commission what uh, would be good uses for our funding. Um, and so before we get a, a deluge of requests from all uh, sectors of the community, we wanted to go out and, you know, take a proactive look at um, 
you know, what those potential uses are. So one of the things that they are hoping to do is to do a community survey of how the community is recovering. And so they will be um, coming in, uh, th they're going to start a, an online survey probably right after the 4th of July, and then they will be coming in in mid-July to do some meetings with um, folks in the community, in including um, appearing, as I said, at your commission meeting to get your feedback uh, and then also to to promote that survey hope to wrap that survey up by the end of July and then have something to present to the commission about you know he, here are all the needs that that have been identified by the community and here's your strategies for how you could tackle those needs thank you okay any announcements Okay, I will just be headed to Liberal this afternoon to attend the Kansas Association of Counties meeting out there. So, and I think Phil will be my backup and making sure I stay out of trouble. So that's about it on that. So anyway, uh, we will recess to room 107B. Yes, Mr. Chair, so uh, staff would request three short executive sessions this morning. Uh, the first would be a um, request to recess to executive session under the employer-employee negotiations exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act for 10 minutes to discuss uh, negotiations with one of our bargaining groups and attendees in addition to the commissioners would be myself and HR Director Marilyn Lemer. So moved and reconvened in this um, room at 10 or 1001. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Passes 5 to 0. Okay, we are back in regular session. We, we have no action on that one. No action. And uh, yes, uh, staff would request an executive session under the non-elected personnel exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act for five minutes for the purpose of discussing a department head evaluation and uh, it would be the commissioners and myself. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We are back in regular session, and we have an item three. <laughs> yes, no action on item two, and for item three, we would again request a recess to executive session under the uh, non-elected personnel exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act for five minutes to discuss a department head evaluation, and it would be myself and the commissioners. Second. It's been moved and seconded. For non-elected personnel, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes, 5-0.
We are back in regular session. Is there any other comments? And no action taken. So any other comments? Seeing none, uh, we'll just adjourn this meeting. Thank you.